now in the 20th century. In Ethiopia, seven million people are threatened by starvation. Thousands have already died. The famine caused by drought is the worst in living memory, and now the rains have failed again for the third year in succession. The relief organizations are doing all they can, but there just isn't enough food to go around. One of the worst hit areas is in the north of the country, where the problem has been complicated by two secessionist wars in Eritrea and Tigray. 40,000 refugees have converged on the town of Coram in the hope of getting some food and medical aid. Our correspondent Michael Burke has been back to Coram after four months and he found the situation far worse. Dawn, and as the sun breaks through the piercing chill of night on the plain outside Coram, it lights up a biblical famine, now in the 20th century. This place, say workers here, is the closest thing to hell on earth. Thousands of wasted people are coming here for help. Many find only death. They flood in every day from villages hundreds of miles away, dulled by hunger, driven beyond the point of desperation. 15,000 children here now, suffering, confused, lost. Death is all around. A child or an adult dies every 20 minutes. Coram, an insignificant town, has become a place of grief. The relief agencies do what they can. Save the Children Fund are caring for more than 7,000 babies. Every day they weigh them on a sling, then compare their weight with their height. By this rule of thumb, one in three is severely malnourished, starved to the point of death. This morning another 114 babies have arrived. The choice of who can be helped and who can't among the constant stream of newcomers is heartbreaking. There's not enough food for half these people. Rumours of a shipment can set off panic. As on most days, the rumours were false. For many here, there would be no food again today. Two months ago, there were 10,000 people here. Now the latest harvest has failed, there are 40,000. There's nothing like enough food in the country, not enough transport to move it if there was. These people have waited all morning. They want food, they're getting clothes. Those naked and most needy are marked by a pen stroke on their foreheads before the distribution begins. An armed guard sits on the small bundles of cast-off clothing sent from countries in Europe. A few jackets, trousers and sweaters, once worn in the wealthy West, now handed out to starving people who have to live in the open through nights when the temperature drops to little over freezing point. Today, only a tiny amount of grain is being given out to those who have brought in firewood. People scrabble in the dirt as they go for each individual grain of wheat. For some, it may be the only food they've had for a fortnight or more. The Ethiopian government tries to persuade these people to go home, but that would make death certain. Better to camp here. Some of the very worst are packed into big sheds. 7,000 now, most apparently dying of malnutrition, pneumonia and the diseases that prey on the starving. This three-year-old girl was beyond any help, unable to take food, attached to a drip, but too late. The drip was taken away. Only minutes later, while we were filming, she died. Her mother had lost all her four children and her husband. The situation is out of control. Whole groups are being ignored. These people have been without food for a month. A government truck arrived to pick up those most desperately ill and take them to the sheds that are already overcrowded. It was a quick and random affair. They took a handful, but hundreds here needed the food and shelter the sheds provide. Those left behind seemed at least as bad as those that were taken, clustering around us in a hopeless appeal for help. If nothing happens, I don't know what we are doing. Then. If there is no food, uh, the medical treatment is a nonsense. Giving drugs to the people, giving uh, injections, giving tablets, if they don't have food, 
it's completely it's quite not ridiculous because we are here and how do you feel about the attitude of the rest of the world to this country i am not a politician i don't care at all about what's going on just i am a witness of Korem. and i know that if nothing is done there will be thousands hundred thousand of people who will die already we have thousands here only Korem. and Korem is nothing in Wolo. And Wolo is not the only place in Ethiopia. Those who die in the night are brought at dawn to be laid out on the edge of the plain. Dozens of them, men, women and children, under blankets or bound in sackcloth for burial in the local custom. For two hours, the bodies kept coming from out of the encampment. This mother and the baby she bore two months ago wrapped together in death. As body after body was brought down, the grief became almost tangible. By quorum standards, it wasn't a bad night, 37 dead. Tomorrow, there would be more. The day after, more still. Once the bureaucracy of death is over, the bodies are picked up to be carried back to the villages they left in hope such a little time ago. A tragedy bigger than anybody seems to realise, getting worse every day. Michael Burke on the victims of the famine in Ethiopia. And reaction to that report, shown in earlier news programmes, has been enormous, not least from the relief agencies who have been working in the area. But much of their response has been anger that more has not been done by governments to help.